Senator Norm Coleman, National Chairman for the Republic Jewish Coalition, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here. The Republican Party is at a crossroads right now. Where do we go from here? Well, tonight we had uh, Senator Bill Haggerty from, from Tennessee. Uh, we had uh, Larry Hogan, governor of Maryland, Republican governor elected twice in a state that is as blue as you can get. Uh, and then we ended the night with uh, Mike Pompeo, former Secretary of State, uh, who's brilliant, by the way, brilliant. And, and then uh, former Vice President Mike Pence, who I, I think kind of ignited this audience. There is a tremendous Republican bench. Folks, listen to the folks that we had tonight, and, and every one of them is capable of kind of charting a course to a, for a better America. And so I think the conversation about where the Republican Party goes is, is just beginning. The 45th president, President Trump, who was the best friend Israel ever had. No one ever denies that. He's kind of declared his candidate for 2024, but you got a number of other folks who are kind of, they're kind of out there. They're not beginning the, the race right now, but clearly there's a lot of talent there. Talking to people within the Republican Jewish coalition within the base itself. What is your sense on where their, I wouldn't say their loyalties lie, but their preferences lie at this point? So first, I think there is just a general understanding and deep appreciation that President Trump was the best friend that Israel ever had in the White House. There's no question about that. On the other hand, I think there are questions about the future, about whether he focuses too much on January 6th, too much focused on November 2020 and not enough about tomorrow, today, tomorrow, and the future. And so I think there is this debate that is just beginning. One, somebody who has substantively, when he left office, inflation was low, crime was under control, the border was under control, and America wasn't embarrassed by, by the withdrawal of Afghanistan. So, oh, and, and again, the razor with Israel was better than any president. On the other hand, the question is, as we move forward, what's the vision for tomorrow? And, and you know, you got folks like Ron DeSantis who will be here. He's articulating a vision that was successful in Florida. And as a result of his victory, we cleaned the, 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 the slate in congressional races in Florida. And you heard tonight people like Vice President Pence and Secretary Pompeo and others who clearly have a vision of, 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 of uh, America that is of you know, better days to come and perhaps a vision that can be more appealing to folks in the suburbs and other places whose votes we lost in the last couple of cycles. And rather than having a domineering victory this November, we still got, you know, Nancy was has gone. Republicans picked up 25 seats in the last two cycles, but we should have done much better. And so president, former president, will he's, he's out there, he's publicly out there, but I think he's gonna have to make a case Okay, uh, versus some of these other folks who are saying, hey, we have a better, we have a path that can bring more people to the table. And so it will be an interesting discussion. I look forward to it. <laughs> we all do at this point. Yeah. One of the old untold stories of the midterm races was New York and the flips along Long Island uh, that led to Republican victories that led eventually to Republicans taking the House. And those, uh, uh, those flips came in heavily Jewish areas and those candidates relied seemingly on kitchen table issues, some of the issues that Governor Hogan spoke about today. Do you feel that there is a, a bandwidth there, a spectrum for Jewish voters to have an impact on issues that all of America can relate to? I, I, I think so. Listen, you look at Florida, for instance, where, uh, DeSantis uh, got 45 percent of the Jewish vote. I, I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, I never met a Republican until I went to college. There were none in my family. There were none in my neighborhood. I thought it was like kind of a cult or something like that. And then all of a sudden I, I, I get into public office and I realize, you know, there are like criminals out there and taxes really don't help working families and too much regulation kills small business. And I'm a Republican. Uh, but in our faith, it's been a challenge. But in the last cycle, we picked up close to 35% of Jews voting for Republicans. That's a big number. Again, think back to your own families. I mean, literally, times you were, you were alone. And, and it's changing. And it's changing because Jews, like every other America, are worried about crime in the streets. 
They're worried about being uh, inflation and the cost of, of, of a gallon of gas. They're worried about being able to feed their families. They're worried about their small business. They're a pretty entrepreneurial group. Okay? And, and, and Democrats crush us with regulation. They crush us with taxes. And, they, and, they, and they, they're, they're not our friends. And so I think there is, is an opportunity there. We're just beginning to see that realized. And you're seeing it in the numbers. As I said, 45% now in Florida, Jewish vote Republicans, 30, close to 35% nationally. And, and I have to say this, without Lee Zeldin running the, the race that he ran, uh, Nancy Pelosi would still be Speaker of the House. Republicans won the House because Lee Zeldin ran a tough race in New York, and, and in the end, we were able to win four or five seats that no one thought we could win. Contrast that in Pennsylvania, with the gubernatorial candidate Mastriani lost by 15%. And as a result, we lost the three or four close races that we should have won. And Mehmet Oz would be a senator today if Mastriani had run the kind of race that, that Zeldin ran in New York. I have no question about that. Speaking of that, Zeldin's going to run for GOP chair. But we, we talk about an increase in Jewish uh, voters in the Republican Party. But there's barely been an increase, two to three now, in the Republican delegation, Jewish Republican delegation. How can uh, uh, Republican Jews recruit more candidates and more winnable candidates going forward? So that's, a, that's a great question, it really is. It's a, it's a great question. I was the only Republican Jewish Senator for Riley. I, I had all inspected, but then he left us. So it was me in the U.S. Senate. Uh, and, and again, you know, as I said, growing up, didn't have a, a, a I didn't have, there, there weren't any like Republicans in my family or my neighborhood. So I think it's a process. And I think having somebody like Lee Zeldin playing a more visible role, I think that's going to be helpful. But, but uh, we, we're, we're making our mark, we're increasing our presence, and, and more than just the Orthodox, certainly the Orthodox community are already there. The Orthodox community is there. We have to kind of reach out beyond the Orthodox community. Uh, and, and if we do so, I think, you know, we'll have those opportunities to have more. Right now, there are, are two, well, there's two, Zeldin and, and David Kustoff from Tennessee. Uh, Zeldin will be leaving. We're left with Kustoff. Hopefully, we'll kind of fill that void in, in the years to come. The Max Miller, George Santos, uh, both uh, elected at Juice. Oh, yeah, right, right, yeah, right, right, right. Senator Norm Coleman, National Chairman Great for the pleasure. Republican and, and by the way, I, I really appreciate all that JNS does. And really good to have you here and being part of this discussion. It's it's part of, again, the conversation that we need to have in our community. And thank you for all you do to kind of make that conversation happen. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks.